Hi, Jamie Pennebaker here. Welcome to the fourth Luke 22 tutorial. Today I'll cover the ways to build and evaluate your own custom dictionaries. Luke measures dozens of psychological related dimensions. Each dimension or dictionary relies on a group of words that have been curated by trained judges with considerable help from advanced computational methods. Luke 22 has about 120 different dictionaries made up of over 12,000 different words. The integrity of Luke is completely dependent on the quality of his dictionaries. Let's start with a real-world example of a dictionary. For Luke 22, we created a politeness dictionary. We wanted to capture the ways people use language when exhibiting politeness. Here is the final politeness group of words. You will see a large number of words and phrases that all capture some feature of politeness. Every word was scrutinized by at least nine different experts. Building a dictionary is serious business, but Luke 22 has the tools to make it fairly easy. In this tutorial, three overlapping topics are covered. The first is the basics of making a dictionary. The second is finding additional words to broaden your dictionary. And the third is to calculate basic statistics on the quality of the dictionary. Let's begin with the basics. Although Luke has a lot of dictionaries, you may need a dictionary that Luke doesn't measure, such as envy, grit, or mellowness, or highly specific mental states, such as post-surgical recovery, or maybe identifying people with specific interests or obsessions. Hmm, that sounds interesting. Let's make a Luke dictionary that identifies people with obsessions. How about obsessions with fitness? We could make a fitness obsession dictionary. Okay, what words might tap fitness obsession? We'd look for words that a fitness obsessed person would bring up in a conversation. Several come to mind. Words like gym, fitness, cardio, abs, pecs, treadmill, weights, diet, jogging, and so forth. So let's make these into a Luke dictionary. We'll start by going to, to the dictionary workbench. Before I forget, always remember that there's additional documentation about dictionaries by going to the help link at the bottom of the page. This will take you to the dictionary workbench page on the Luke website. Okay, let's go back to the workbench page. When you start, you are given three options load an existing dictionary, a new dictionary, or start from a template. Let's start with the new dictionary option. Click on that and at the top of the page you will see we are in the dictionary tab. Later we will talk about the other tabs. On the table itself is a column where we will enter the dictionary words. I'll click on the add row tab several times and begin entering the fitness words. For the word gym, I've added an asterisk to tell the computer to include all words that start with G-Y-M, including gyms, gymnasium, etc. Here are the other fitness words. I've also put an X in the new category column to tell the pro program to count each of the words. Okay, we've now finished the first step. But wait, we probably missed dozens of other fitness words. This can be fixed. This takes us to the next section of the tutorial, finding additional words to broaden our dictionary. Luke 22 can search a large text bank to find words that are mathematically related to the words you are interested in. To do this, click on the Add Dictionary Words tab. Now enter some words in the search bar. I've added treadmill, jogging, and strength. I could have added more or fewer, but am in a rush. Okay, click on the Find Similar Words button and then the magic happens. After comparing the search words with the semantic network we've constructed, you see a long list of words that are semantically similar. Some will be directly related to our obsessive fitness measure, but most won't be. As I look down the list, I check those that should be in the dictionary, like endurance, abdomen, haunches, etc. These are, there are more, but I'll stop. To add these words to the dictionary, click the Add to Dictionary button, and voila, they're added. You can click save, and Save the Dictionary and use the di new dictionary immediately. That was easy. Maybe too easy. How do we know this is a good dictionary? What makes a good dictionary anyway? For word dictionaries, four rules should be considered. The first is that the words themselves in a dictionary must be logically related to what the dictionary is supposed to measure. 
A good way to assess face validity is to get a group of people to agree that the words are appropriate. Second, the words must be internally consistent. Statistically, this means that each word in a dictionary should be related to the sum of all the other dictionary words. Third, it's critical that the words within a dictionary are used at relatively similar rates. For example, if you had 10 words and one of the 10 was used 90% of the time, that dictionary would essentially reflect that single word. And finally, does the dictionary measure what it's supposed to measure? For example, do people with high scores on our fitness obsession scale spend more money on fitness equipment and services? For the final part of this tutorial, we'll briefly describe methods for measuring internal consistency and word balance. So far, we've made a face valid fitness obsession dictionary. Is it internally consistent? To answer this question, start on the dictionary page. Click the internal consistency tab and you're asked to select your data for dictionary consistent evaluation. What does that mean? Okay, relax. To evaluate the internal consistency of a dictionary, you need a text-based data set to understand how the words in our dictionary actually work. We've curated a set of 2,000 blogs and Reddit comments that actually cover hundreds of topics. You can actually download this data set from the Dictionary Workbench webpage. Scroll to the bottom of it and you'll see the zip file. Click it, download it, and unzip it, and once open, you will see a folder named Luke 22 Demo Data. You will now be able to run the Evaluate Internal Consistency tab. We need to load the unzipped text file, so click on the Folder tab and choose the Demo Data folder. Once it's chosen, you can see it in the workbench. Now click the Evaluate Internal Consistency tab at the bottom, and the Dictionary Evaluation begins. And here's the output. At the top, two internal consistency numbers are given. The first is Cronbox Alpha. In this case, it's 0.34. This is lower than we'd like. For surveys, we usually like numbers between 0.6 and 0.8. However, for word analyses, numbers between 0.3 and 0.5 are minimally acceptable. The Cooter-Richardson formula is more robust for language data. We like to see numbers of 0.5 or higher. Again, this number is in the low range. Next, look at the averages of all the words we have put in our dictionary. The mean for the most common one is gym, which is 0.0079. For diet, 0.0055. The next is 0.0017, then 0.115, etc. By the time we get to the word treadmill, the means are practically zero. This means that everything after, the, after treadmill could probably be removed from the dictionary. The good news is there is no single word that is far higher in its general use than any other. If we can show that it is related to important real-world behaviors, then we could begin to trust it. In the interim, the scale could be improved with more and better words. This has been a very quick and superficial overview of the dictionary workbench. A more detailed version for you word nerds out there will be coming out soon. If you have any questions, contact us. Otherwise, happy looking.